In this fourth video, I'm going to show the final method for defining tendon geometry in RM Bridge. This method is going to take advantage of the cantilever tool within RM. And also in this method, I'm going to be giving a description of how to do a more detailed tendon geometry definition. The previous three examples uh, used a preliminary tendon profile approach where I lumped a group of tendons into one profile. This method, however, allows you to produce more easily tendon geometry such as this. An example such as this is similar to the bridge that I've been using in these videos, except if I turn off some of the views, you'll see many more tendon profiles defined here. This bridge would be constructed using the balanced cantilever construction method. Although I'll be using the cantilever tool, it may sound as though it can only be used for balanced cantilever construction method, the tool can actually be used just to set up more detailed tendon geometry differently than the ways I've shown before. To start using this tool, I'll need to do some setup in the modeler, much as I did in the other examples. So I'll open up the modeler and go to the cross section. In this cross section, I'm going to need to add certain points that I can call up later in the balance cantilever tool. This is the same cross section that I've been using in the other examples, and if I turn on the rest of the construction lines, you'll see that it's a regularly created cross section as would be used in any project. However, if I clean up this section a bit, I've left only a couple lines showing that I'll be using to create these points. We'll be using geometry points. Uh, which I've shown how to create in the previous videos and can be done by creating a reference set and placing individual points within the cross section. There's one other tool in the cross section creation that will allow me to more quickly insert several points at once. Near the end of the list of tools at the top of the window you'll find the grid tool. If I click on the grid tool and look down at the command line you'll see the instructions are to click a construction line for the raised direction. I'll choose this construction line that defines the top of the box and then click aside since these geometry points will be below that line. Next I'll need another construction line to specify the start point. If I choose this line here and then click to the side it will open up the grid definition dialog box. What this information is defining is that the baseline is the top of the section and the distance I want this grid to be below that baseline will be 0.15 meters. The start line is this vertical line that I clicked second and I'll allow the first point to start directly at that line. Down at the bottom I'll define a name for each one of these points and I'll give them a prefix such as TL for top left of this section since there might be a ray on the other side of the section at the top right and a ray of points at the bottom as well as I continue to put more geometry points in this section. I'll allow the start number for the points to be 1 and the number will be ascending and then I'll have 8 points defined. The spacing between each of these points will be 0.3 meters. When I click OK you'll see this ray that I have defined. If I zoom in here, you'll see the start point is TL1, next to that is TL2, and so on and so forth, up to TL8. So now I've defined a array of geometry points that I can call up later in the balance cantilever tool. And I'll need to remember the names of each one of these points and their location. The next thing I'll need is another point in the cross section that I'm going to use as the anchor location. To do this I can use a standard geometry point by again creating a reference set of the type geometry points much as I did in the previous examples. I'll activate this now and then choose the tool for creating a reference point at an intersection and then at this intersection point here I'll create a geometry point and call it TL-A for the top left anchor point and say OK. Now I've defined all of the points I need 
for beginning to define the tendons in this bridge. I'll need to recalculate and recreate the model so that the model in the analyzer now has all of these points in it. Out in the analyzer, you'll initially see no difference at all in your model. But it's time to open now the cantilever tool, which you'll find in the menu tree under Modeler. If I open up the cantilever tool, the second tab is the tendons tab. This is for defining tendon geometry. To begin defining the tendon geometry, I'll first need to create a group. So I'll insert a tendon group. This group I'm going to call top left because it will contain all of the tendons in the top left of the section, much as I named those points TL in the section in the modeler. Now I'll need to input some information about the tendons that will be defined in this group. I'll choose a material for them. I'll input the area of each individual tendon, the area of the duct, a friction factor, and a beta factor. Then I'll define a start offset. This is for defining the actual tendon number. If I set a start offset at 100, then the first tendon I define will be numbered tendon 101, and the next tendon 102, and so forth. Now that I've defined a group, I can start inputting the actual tendon geometry. Down at the bottom of this window, you'll see the buttons for inserting a new tendon. When I insert a new tendon, you'll see that it has been numbered tendon 101 and a list of the elements in the bridge. In this bridge, the peer table will be elements 109, 110, 111, and 112. And I know that from having created the model. To define the tendons, I will simply come over and work my way through these columns left to right. In element 109, the first tendon will start. I'll insert a new point and put in TL-A. That was the anchor point that I created for these tendons in the cross section. The next line is a distance along element 109 where this point should be located. Zero being at the beginning of element 109 and a one being at the end of element 109. So I can input a value here, and if I put 0, it will be default. Alpha 1 and alpha 2 are again ways to fix the angle at which a tendon passes through this point, much as it was shown in the previous examples. Next, in element 110, at the beginning of the element, this tendon will now be passing through a different point. So I'll set a new point for TL1. What this has shown so far is that at the beginning of element 109, the tendon is located at the anchor point. And at the beginning of element 110, this tendon will be passing through the tendon point TL1. In element 111, it will also be passing through TL1. And it will be passing through that point all the way to the end of element 111. The last point for this first tendon will be in element 112. And it will again pass back through the anchor point. And it will pass through the anchor point at the end of this element. This is all that's necessary for the geometry definition of the first tendon. If I want to see how this looks to check and make sure that it's going correctly, within the cantilever tool, I'll come to the import export tab. I'll choose to export the tendon groups to TCL files and then import those to the RM project. This is how you can send the information that you've just defined in the cantilever tool out into RM and into the model. And now I'll execute. I'll get a warning that says the schedule has already been defined and was redefined. This is 
perfectly fine. Back out in this model, I'll now recalculate to do a cross-section calculation and a structure check as I've been doing in the previous examples. If I change the view now to turn off the extruded view and the cross sections, you'll see this first tendon that has been defined. It's important to note also that the cantilever tool is just an alternative method for inputting the same information that we've done in the previous examples. If I come in the menu tree to structure, tendons, and element assignment, you'll see this tendon has been defined the same way that we were doing it previously. It's assigned to elements 109 to 112, meaning that those are the elements through which it passes. And the geometry has been set up the same way we've done before as well. At each one of these points, the tendon is passing through a particular cross-section point. To start defining other tendons now, you can go back to the cantilever tool, back to the tendons tab, and simply insert a new tendon. I've inserted this new tendon now and assume for this particular bridge the construction method is balanced cantilever and a new segment will be added to the end. So now my next tendon will pass through elements 108 through 113 for this group. I'll again have it start at the anchor point and say OK. Then at the beginning of element 109 it will pass through this point. At the beginning of 110 now, it will pass through a new point, TL2. I can also copy these lines simply by pressing Control C on my keyboard and Control V to paste. So this tendon will start at the anchor point, pass through the top left one point, then the top left two, then back through the top left one point and eventually back through the anchor point. I'll also want to set these values to 1, meaning that the tendon is passing through this point at the end of these particular elements. I'll again go back to the import export page, export these tendon profiles to RM, and do a cross-section calculation and structure check so that this new tendon shows up in the model. Now I can see the new tendon that I've defined longer than the first. And again, in the menu tree, this tendon shows up exactly the same way it did when we were creating them directly in the RM analyzer in previous videos. Using this method, I can create a whole set of tendons through those geometry points that I created here on the outside of the cross-section over this pier. The benefit of using groups in the cantilever tool is that if I had defined a ray on the other side of this cross-section, I could copy entire groups of tendons over to a new set of points and then simply change the point names through a find and replace within the cantilever tool. In that way, I will be able to more quickly create tendon profiles that look like this.